Okay, so here I am with another Masterverse, Masters of the Universe Revelation unboxing, and this is Savage He-Man. So, uh, I'm really excited about this one. I've been wanting to get it for a while, but again, like with Skelegod, with these like more expensive figures, I tend to kind of drag my feet on them and you know, the, the, it's, it's, it's just one of those things where I'm just like, well, I could get this one, but this other one's, like, way cheaper, and yeah, like, I can save a little bit of money for now, but but I know eventually I'm going to wind up getting one of these big figures. Sometimes this is even the sort of thing where, like, money's just kind of tight for me that week, and I can't really afford to buy anything, so, you know, and, and sometimes it's like, well, I can afford to buy one $20 figure this week. So I but can't really afford to buy a, a you know, thirty dollar one at all. <laughs> but this week I decided to go ahead and splurge and get this one. So uh, I cut the tape at the top already. I'm about to open it, but first we're gonna have a look at the artwork. And we can see like on the back he's much more enormous on the show than he actually is in the figure. And that actually brings me to one of the reasons I was so excited about this figure in the first place is like. Like, despite the fact that they draw him as being, like, this Hulk-like creature on here, they made him more the same size as the regular He-Man in the figure. And, uh, for me, it, it, it's not, it's not this version of He-Man. Like, and I'm glad, because, you know, while this was kind of amusing to see on the show, uh, for me, this is gonna represent that original He-Man, mini-comic He-Man. Like, uh, this is, uh, the character they... Ular, as they call him in the uh, classics line, but you know th that original He-Man, the guy from the jungle, who's like, you know, there, there's there's great trouble brewing. I'm gonna go out and and fight the great evil that's coming. And uh, I like that version of the character. That was that was my original version of He-Man before Filmation came along and uh, kind of reinvented the character. And don't get me wrong, I like the Filmation cartoon. Don't don't at me with. Uh, your anger at me being like a filmation hater or something like that, because nothing could be further from the truth. But uh, but I will always have a soft spot in my heart for the the uh, the savage He Man, as uh, this package calls him, as I've always called him, like the the pre Prince Adam kind of He Man. I like that one. So uh, so I'm pretty excited about opening this up. I'm gonna pause this for just a second because I just realized I should probably go ahead and get the. Uh, the other Masterverse He-Man figure to compare it to. So I'm going to do that real quick. Hang on a second. Okay, so through the magic of editing, I am now back instantaneously. And uh, I've got the uh, other Masterverse Revelation He-Man. And we're going to do some comparing. It's comparison time. Well, not quite. But, you know, you can't fault me for doing a little bit of an homage to uh, Pixel Dan. Because I always enjoy his, uh, his He-Man reviews been watching him since uh since that first masters of the universe classics review that he did so uh, uh here i go opening it up again before i've read the the bio on the back i already showed off the artwork so i guess uh i guess i got that right didn't i okay so savage he-man the most powerful primitive primate in the universe primate that's kind of rude <laughs> For years, it was assumed that Prince Adam could only call upon the power of Grayskull using the Sword of Power. But what happens if he did not raise aloft the magic sword and said, by the power of Grayskull? Answer, Savage He-Man. A combination of primal rage and all the power in the universe. He-Man tears through Eternia in an uncontrolled rampage, leaving his friends hoping that Adam is in there somewhere. So, uh, one thing that kind of bugs me a little bit about this bio, which is mostly a cool bio, and I like these bios a lot, is that, uh, I don't think it kind of got across the point that, that Adam was aware, and, and this is something that I really liked on the, the show, and I really liked, again, in the mini-comic, Rock in a Hard Place, and I thought they actually did a better job of it in that mini-comic. God, I love that mini-comic. That is, like, one of the best mini-comics ever. Rock in a Hard Place is awesome. Uh, <laughs> But, you know, the, the fact that Adam kind of knew what he was doing, he knew that he was he was just kind of channeling a conduit, and the, 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 the sword didn't really give him the power. He always had the power inside of him. I like that aspect of it. 
So, but like I said, I thought they did a better job of it in Rock and a Hard Place, where he doesn't become the Hulk. <laughs> he just kind of becomes He-Man. So, uh, but yeah, uh, let's go ahead and we'll take all the accessories out. And one thing I haven't mentioned, but I'm sure you guys have noticed, is that it also comes with Orko. Very sad looking Orko. So, uh, Orko was probably one of my favorite things on Masters of the Universe Revelation. I thought that his storyline was really cool and very emotional and uh, gave some, some pathos to a character that's normally comic relief. Okay, so his his hands are stuck in the package with the loathsome plastic tabs that I hate so much. And his, his, his wrists are so skinny, and I worry that they might have been warped. And I worry that I might accidentally, his wrists are so skinny, I worry that I might accidentally cut them off while I'm trying to cut them with my X-Acto knife. Why did you do this, Mattel? Why do you insist on tormenting me? <laughs> like, you give me this really cool action figure, and then you package him in such a way where I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to destroy him as I remove him from the package. So, much like the Origins uh, Orco, which I love and is my favorite Orco figure that I've ever owned. Uh, he comes with a little face that plugs in at the bottom. What's going on out there? <laughs> and uh, you can see there, he's got like a little magic face so he can float around. He's very sad looking. His eyes are very sad and this. His ears are all drooped down because he's sick, because there's no more magic in the land, and it's killing him. <sighs> Thanks, Skeletor. But yeah, it's a nice representation of, uh, of uh, the character as he appeared in Masters of the Universe Revelation. So, good job on that. And it's nice to have this, this, uh, this figure as part of our collection, for those of us who are collecting these figures. So, uh... I do think it's kind of strange they put him in with Savage He-Man, since I don't believe that uh, Orko shared any scenes with uh, Savage He-Man. I certainly don't think this version of Orko did, because I don't want to get into spoilers. <laughs> if you haven't seen it yet, you go ahead and watch it on Netflix. So, uh, let's go ahead and take the uh, accessories out of the package. So, first of all, we have a spear. Which, again, this is, to me, more of an homage to the, the mini-comic. I don't remember him having any weapons when he was Hulk He-Man in the show. And then, what I think is the strangest accessory to include in it is the Sword of Power. Because, as we've already established, this is what happens to uh, He-Man when Adam doesn't have the Sword of Power. But we get one anyway. So, uh, I'm not going to complain about having an extra Sword of Power, even if it is a little warped. I'll have to... Fix that with a blow dryer later. And uh, got some extra hands. And these are definitely going to be useful. These are going to be the hands that I'm going to... It just popped right out. These are going to be the hands that I'm actually going to put onto the figure instead of the open hands. I get why they display them with the open hands because it seems a little more fitting of the character that it's allegedly supposed to be. But uh, I, I like for my figures to be able to hold stuff like I've established before. So, with very few exceptions, other than open hands or fist hands, like solid fist hands, I'm going to prefer to have these. Alright. And then his last accessory, and this is probably actually the one I'm most excited about, is he's got this really cool battle axe. And I think I'd mentioned in my review of the, uh, the basic Revelation figure, how I was kind of disappointed that he didn't come with an axe. Because I always think of that as being, you know, kind of uh, one of the, the definitive weapons that I like to have with a He-Man figure. And this is a really cool axe. It's huge, and you can see it's got lots of nicks in it from battle. This is uh, truly an axe that a savage He-Man would wield. So yeah, we're going to get out of the package, and he actually doesn't have any of those damn twist ties or tabs holding him in. Apparently it was really important that we hold Orko's wrists <laughs> as, 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 you know, just, you know, pain in the ass to get out as possible. This is not a show made for kids. Uh, but, but, Savage He-Man, we don't need anything restraining him. He could just come straight out of the package. 
And man, this is an impressive looking figure, and I'm really glad that I got it. <laughs> so just right off the bat. So something that I noticed immediately, and this is something that makes this He-Man better than this He-Man, is the skin tone. And I don't know if this is going to come across on the camera. It looks like it is, at least on my monitor. Uh, is one of the things that bugged me about the Revelation He-Man in the first place is that he had this sort of jaundiced skin tone. And I don't remember if I complained about that in my video about this guy or not, but I probably noticed it. Probably when I was talking about how you could you can actually change these heads out with Origins. and uh, but But the skin colors don't match exactly. So even if you wanted to have like a vintage head on here, you'd have to repaint the head or repaint the body or both. This one has a much more natural skin tone. And uh, if I have, I'm pretty sure I do have because I had uh, one I was working on for a custom. I think that the head color is a little more, uh, uh, the, the, the skin color is a little closer to the Origins figure. It has this wash so that makes it a little more difficult to tell, but it's definitely closer. So I wonder how it's going to look if I put uh, the Origins head onto this He-Man as opposed to the uh, the regular Revelation He-Man. Yeah, that matches up a bit better, I think. So if you wanted to go like full-on mini-comic and have that vintage version of He-Man on here, that's the one. Now, I think that... Uh, I do think that this might actually be, now that I'm looking at it, is it the same torso? I think it might be a different torso. I was thinking it was the same one, but now I think it's different. It's uh, a little wider, and the pecs do seem to be a little more exaggerated. But And the neck is shorter, I think. Let's pull the head off of... Uh, yeah, no, they might be the same length. But it's fitting on there. I'm going to compare. I'm going to have to take the armor off of Revelation He-Man so we can tell this. And since I didn't have him displayed as holding his weapons, that means I'm going to have to pull all of that out. We are probably going to do that at some point anyway, though. So let's go ahead and we're going to take the uh, breastplate off of him. Which is on there really tight. I don't think I've taken the breastplate off of this He-Man. Mm. Maybe I'll slide it up a little bit. So I think that I can't really tell, but I think that this might actually be a different sculpt. Just ever so slightly different. It's not a hundred percent the same, I think, but it's it's a little bit wider. So I think they did try to give him a little more bulk, but I don't think they really gave him like Enough bulk as opposed to how the character looks on the show. And these seem to be the same arms. It doesn't have the wristbands on there, but the arms seem to be the same. So let's go ahead and pop the head back on here. Yeah, I was just not having much success in getting this armor off. I know it's removable, but uh, I haven't actually tried to take it off before. It's just the straps are so tight. And I don't want to break them or warp them or anything like that. So I'll probably just have to try to look at it with a hairdryer or something later. But anyway, let's go ahead and put them back together so we can uh, get back to doing this review. I think this is the sword that came with... Yeah, because it's not warped. This is the sword that came with uh, Revelation He-Man. Regular Revelation He-Man, not Savage He-Man. All right. So, we'll just display him with the sword for now. I'm not going to bother with the shield or anything like that. So, uh, but yeah, the, the skin color on this one is a lot more of a, a natural Caucasian skin tone. It's a little darker and a lot less yellow. So, uh, if you're somebody who was disappointed with the skin color on this one, if you get one of these, you could probably swap out a lot of these parts. Like, uh, I'm sure you can put the wristbands and the armor onto them and uh, swap out the lower legs for the boots. And there's probably a way to get this loincloth off, probably if you heat it up and pull it over the figure. Like, remove the legs uh, and then pull it over the, the hips. 
that would probably be a good way to get uh, the loincloths off and switch them around. So then you could put the, the one with the belt on there, and you could probably make yourself a uh, uh, a Revelation He-Man that looks a little more like uh, like he doesn't have jaundice. And you could probably even like keep the same head and swap out the hair on it. I do think that this is a better face sculpt. It might just be that it's painted differently. But it, it looks a little better. It has a slightly different facial expression to me. This one's a little more smirky. And this one's a little more serious. Or if you like the long hair, you could keep the long hair on there. I'd seen where somebody had taken the parts. And I might do this myself. Try to get another one. Uh, I'd have to get a, a first King Grey Skull before I get a second one. <laughs> and a second one of this guy. But uh, if, if you uh, were able to swap the King Grayskull parts onto this one, you could make a 2000X style King Grayskull that would work out pretty well. Uh, he wouldn't have the, you know, the ties on the hair here, but, you know, you could probably figure out a way to do that. If, if, if you're really that in, I wouldn't really care, honestly. I'd be like, yeah, it's good enough. So let's go ahead and swap out the hands, because... I definitely want to get those weapon holding hands on there so you can hold some weapons. We can show that off for a little bit. So, get those in there. I might not mind leaving the open hand on the left hand. And you can still kind of pose, like, where he's gripping the, the spear in the right hand, but just kind of, like, loosely gripping it in the left hand. That's a cool sort of look. But let's put the spear... Well, we'll save the spear for last. Because I think that's how I'm going to display this guy. So, uh, let's put the battle axe in his hand. And I really like this battle axe. I'm looking forward to seeing what it looks like with him. This will probably wind up being one that goes with the Revelation figure. Since, like I said, I, I kind of consider that one of the classic He-Man accessories. And I think he would look really cool with it. So, there we go. Grips that nice and tightly. And uh, ready to kick some ass. And... Could we get a two-handed pose out of it? I think we could. I think if you had him grip it, it he'd have to grip it kind of like near the top here. I'm not going to bother to put it in his hand. That might also be a good use of the uh, open left hand. But, you know, you could get him into a two-handed grip with this. So that's pretty cool. It does not look exactly like the vintage axe. And in fact, I think it looks a little more like the uh, the the one that came with Origins. But that makes sense, actually, because this is based off of Alfredo... Those were based off of Alfredo Alcala's designs, like how he drew them in the mini-comics. And uh, this, again, like I said, to me, this is going to be mini-comic He-Man, so it would make sense he would have a mini-comic-inspired axe. It's a little more chipped up in battle damage than that one, but I'm not going to complain about that. So then next he came with probably the one uh, accessory that this version of He-Man that it's supposed to be should not come with, which is the Sword of Power. But, again, I'm not going to complain about having an extra Sword of Power. And I do like the Revelation design. I think it's pretty cool looking. It's 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 really nice that the sword is something that uh, you can get so many different unique designs out of. Like Alcala's looks different from Filmation's, which looks different from this one. But they're all recognizable as being the sword of power. They all have like that same sort of shape to them. And I like that an awful lot. So uh, so this is a cool accessory that this figure didn't need to come with. But I'm glad he did because it's going to give me an extra one. And I always like having extra ones. And last but not least, the one that uh, to me this guy is Ular. Like I said, like they called him in classics. Uh, but to me he's just He-Man. <laughs> But I'll call him that if it helps keeping him get mixed up from any of the other various characters who have held the title of He-Man over the years. And uh, the spear, which I think he looks really cool with. And that's how he's going to get displayed on my shelf. So, uh, like I said, as a guy who had that original mini-comic with that original He-Man origin, like before the, the, the goddess gave him all the weapons and accoutrements, that made him into He-Man, and he was just like this really tough guy from the jungle with a spear who went out into the world because he knew there was a great evil coming, and, and he was going to have to be the one to fight it. Uh, this is a fantastic representation of 
that version of the character. I think it's a better representation of that version of the character than it is uh, the Savage He-Man we saw on Revelation. So, because uh, that guy should be, like, much more big and bulky and Hulk-like. Maybe at some point I'll actually get, like, if I can find a Marvel Legends Hulk for cheap <laughs> and repaint him to be this the, the, uh, the Savage He-Man from that. But to me, this is just going to be Ular, and I really like it. Now, I do have the Classics version of Ular, which since I wasn't subscribed that year, I want to pay in a pretty penny for it. No. <laughs> but but it was worth it to me because, like I said, I, I love that iteration of the character so much. And uh, it's really cool that we have one that's on retail shelves right now where if, if you missed out on that one, you can go and get this one. And once we have the 40th anniversary He-Man, which is based on the original toy, you can even swap out that head onto this one and uh, hopefully the skin colors will match, and you can make yourself a perfect representation of that early mini-comics He-Man before he was He-Man, back when he was, you know, just some dude from the jungle who, you know, you know, stepped out of his comfort zone and went out to save the universe. So he's a cool guy. I do think they maybe did, overdid it on the wash a little bit on this, like they tend to do on these figures, but I could probably clean that up myself, maybe rub a little bit of Brasso on it and get rid of some of that but uh but that's a minor complaint i don't really care he's got these big feet that you know they even like did a good job with like the bottom of the feet i feel like sometimes they just make the bottom of the feet flat and on a barefooted character that can look kind of creepy but they didn't so much here this would probably be a good figure also like if you wanted to make a custom figure of tarzan He'd probably be a good base for Tarzan. Like, if you imagine him with his hair painted black, you're already mostly there. And if you don't mind Tarzan having a furry loincloth instead of a doeskin loincloth, uh, uh, you could probably even keep that one. So anyway, that's it for, uh, for this version of He-Man. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and all the fun YouTube stuff down below. Uh, tell me what you think of this version of He-Man if you're buying him, if you're not buying him. And if you are buying him, like, are, are you going to use him as, like, your, your Revelation Savage He-Man? Or, or, like me, do you see this as more like being uh, the Ular He-Man? So, anyway, we'll talk to you next time. Bye.